Welcome, welcome everyone. Good morning. I said good morning. Thank you very much. I hope we're all awake because we have a very full program ahead of us the coming three days and we need all your energy and good spirit to get us through. Um, so just for those of you who don't know, my name is Wies, Wies Maas, um, and I will be your chair for the coming three days together with my great colleague Berenice Valdez from Mexico sitting, sitting right here. Um, we're delighted that so many of you could join us here in Berlin for the 10th anniversary of the Global Forum, and that's also the 10th time that the Civil Society Days are taking place. Excellencies from, from government, from our local partner, panelists, friends in civil society. For those of you who've been at the GFMD before, you know that this year our format is quite different than any of the other years that we have organized the GFMD. That means that the government days have already started yesterday. We are starting our program only today. Um, what we're going to do today is look at what are our shared messages, what are our priorities, what are our recommendations that we would like to discuss with governments tomorrow when we meet them for a full day of common space. And then on Saturday we will all come back in this room together and look at what is it that we as civil society ourselves are going to commit to that we can do in the years to come. But first things first, yesterday night we gathered at a prelude at the Brandenburger Gate, where many of you, but also many local migrant communities, shared their stories, shared poetry, shared songs of your hardship, of detention stories, of disappearances of loved ones, but also about the beauty of diversity and about the power of organizing across borders and across boundaries. And we were thinking, could there have been a more symbolic place to celebrate or commemorate the 10th anniversary of the Global Forum on Migration and Development than in this city right here in Berlin? A city that was home to one of the most notorious walls ever built. A wall that for nearly three decades divided a people with concrete, barbed wire, soldiers, and the threat of death for those, of them, for those that try to cross without papers. But the city is notorious too because that wall came down, led by ordinary people literally taking it down with their own hands, rebuilding unity in its place. And hard as that, that might seem to imagine these days, some days, for some of us working in certain countries, walls do come down sometimes. So let's keep that in mind when we organize, when we sometimes despair, and when we try to move on, walls do come down, and that's what we try to work on. So as I hope you've all seen and read at the program, our, almost our entire days are focused on a thing called the Global Compact, the Global Compact for Migration. So our theme is safe, orderly, and regular migration now. Mechanics of a compact worth agreeing to. So we're going to spend a lot of time this morning bringing each other up to date and up to speed. What is this global compact or the global compacts? Because there's also one for refugees. Um, why do we need it? What, what difference does it make in the life of migrants, refugees and societies? Why does it matter for your work on the ground? How can a compact help to contribute to fighting xenophobia and countering toxic discourses? creating regular pathways for refugees and migrants, stop families from being separated, and stop putting children in detention. Are we seizing the moment, the opportunity of this compact, or are we making too much of it? Should we focus our energies elsewhere? But as we are focusing on the compact or the compacts, there's one other important word in the title of our theme, and that's the word now. Last year, after the New York Declaration for Refugees and Migrants was adopted in the United, at the United Nations in September, a big group of civil society lead, leaders, many of you in this room, adopted a document which is called Seven Actions That World Leaders Need to Take Now to Change Things on the Ground. It's, it's in your welcome packages. Um, and I'm just mentioning this to remind you that as we, as we strategize and as we think about what are the building blocks that we want to have in these global compacts, let us also think about what we can do tomorrow 
with our governments to try to change policies. Now, compact and now. So these are the issues on the table, but the question really is, who is at our table? You. Um, so if you could spend a little, little bit of time looking around in the room and seeing who we have gathered here with us today. We have the highest number of civil society delegate, delegates registered, uh, at least since 2011. I don't think everyone is here yet. Uh, I know some, of, some people are joining us on Saturday, but it's a very big number and a very big group. So could I maybe ask those of you who are either a refugee or a migrant to stand up and identify yourself? Thank you. Please stay standing. Then please stay, st please, please stay standing. Can I, can I ask everyone who is the Yaspar or had parents that were migrants to join the people already standing? Then can I ask everyone who might have family or friends that are currently migrants somewhere in the world to stand up? <laughs> and, and I think our panelists would would be part of this group too. That's just to say that we all have something with migration. We are, this all relates us, it's personal. It's not only professional, it's not only our work, it's our personal stories and the stories of our family. Then looking at regional diversity, starting with the local, who among you is from Berlin? Is there anyone from Berlin? Anyone else from other cities in Germany? <laughs> Europe. Who are delegates from Europe? Thank you. I think our biggest group this year. <laughs> Africa. Who's from Africa? Who's joined us all the way from Africa on a long trip? <laughs> then our friends from Southern America and Central America. Who's in the room? <laughs> North America, the US, Canada? <laughs> Asia. Who is here from Asia? Yay! <laughs> and then before I forget, the Middle East. Are there any delegates from the Middle East? <laughs> Excellent. So I've got one last question for you and then, then, then we'll get and, and turn to our panelists. Australia, the Pacific, sorry. Australia. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, can I ask those of you who are here for the first time, who've never been to a GFMD previously, to stand up and identify yourself. Thank you very much for joining us. I hope you will come back after this global forum. Um, it's, it's, it's a great pleasure to see so many new, new faces, but also so many uh, veterans in the room. Um, so one... Final remark before we turn to the, to the panelist and my co-chair. Um, when I was invited by the International Steering Committee to, to be your chair this year for the Global Forum, I started to reflect on my own journey within the GVMD. I've been involved in the organizing since 2011. Before that, worked a little while on the government side. And I started to reflect, what have I, what have I learned and what am I bringing with me? And I... I realized that, I, that I've learned a lot of new words and a lot of new vocabulary and I started to reflect on the power of words and the power of stories. So in 2012, when we had the first forum in Africa, we learned about the concept of Ubuntu. Ubuntu, I am what I am because we are what we are. In 2014, Gibril Fowl, one of our previous years, told us the concept of Tumoranke. Tumoranke means a sudden loss of social bearing. That's what a lot of migrants go to on an everyday basis. How do we stop that, Tumaranke? And then Michel Lavoie in 2014 told us that there's many alternative words that we can use 
for illegal. No one can ever be illegal. But not only did she tell that to us, she directly told that to Ban Ki-moon. It's, it's, it's a memory I cherish. So then I was thinking, what can I add to that vocabulary and that concept, the concepts that we're building in this forum? And there's two, two terminologies that I've, that I've come across that I think would be quite fitting for what we, are, what we are set out to do in the coming days. And one is a word that exists both in German as well as in Dutch, it's called Tatendrang or Dadendrang in Dutch. And it means a zest for action, the urge to need to act. Sometimes it can mean to be a little bit overzealous, but maybe that's what we need. So that's what's something that I want to instill on you today, on all of us, that we have a sense of Tatendrang, the issues that we deal with are urgent. The other word I only learned last week. I spent some time in Uganda speaking to displaced people and I met a group of young Congolese refugees who told me about the word Tumaini. It means hope and confidence in Swahili. This group of young refugees had come alone to Kampala, Uganda. They had close to nothing uh, on, on, on them except heaps of energy and hope to make something of their life, something better than what they had left behind. So what they did is they started to self-organize. They formed a group. They started to give language classes to their fellow, fellow Congolese. They started to teach ICT lessons for those that knew ICT. They have a women empowerment workshop. They do job placement programs. And they do this both for local Ugandans who are vulnerable as well as for Congolese. And they call their program Tumaini. So that's the other word that I want us to take along uh, as we organize in our, in our working sessions, in our plenary sessions. Let's have a sense of Tatentrang and a sense of Tumaini. Um, so that is what I also shared with the governments yesterday when they opened up the government summit. We were invited to speak to the governments with a few words of welcome and unlike previous years I couldn't yet share what we as civil society have agreed that our common messages are. That will come tomorrow. So what we did is we shared the story of the wall and we shared the story of Datentang and Tumani and I think the speech is in uh, your welcome packages. So. That's it for me for a word of welcome. I'm now going to hand over to our great co-chair, Berenice Valdez. Um, she's from Mexico, and as many of you know, Berenice has one, been one of the driving forces behind a lot of the work around women and women in migration. And she herself is a public policy coordinator for the Institute for Women in Migration in Mexico. So, Beren, the floor is yours. Hola, voy a hablar en español para que por favor se pongan sus audífonos. Eh, estoy muy orgullosa de poder hablar en español y espero que este sea el primer foro mundial donde inauguremos paneles multilingües. Que sigamos hablando en nuestros idiomas o en los idiomas en donde nos, con los que nos sentamos más 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 a gusto, más confortables hablando. Eh, voy a hacer todas mis intervenciones en español, entonces les voy a pedir que tengan sus audífonos cercanos. Eh, estoy muy orgullosa de estar con Viz. Viz It's an honor to work Viz. with Viz. She has done a great work articulating all the strength of the different global civil societies, providing support to all the people that work in, in the field of migration. She has a lot of experience, as many of you already know from the uh, World Forum. She has been an important teacher for me during all this process, and I am thankful to her. It's an honor to work with her. I would like to thank the civil society. Today is our day. This is the day of the civil society, so we have to do our work. There are many efforts of many people. Many people have made a lot of efforts so that we can be here. The uh, coordinators, the steering committee, the GCM, organizations from all over the world. There's the effort from donors, from governments, from the German government who is hosting this meeting. This is the effort of the people who protect human rights that come, came here. It is really valuable for us to work together. It is 
really important that we are here together working people from all over the world in order to change the negative impacts of migration of the current migration policies the negative impact of the legal frameworks that do not promote mobility or the transfer of rights or choosing to migrate or not migrate. We are here in order to change what needs to be changed. What we have is not enough, and the efforts that have been done are not enough. There is an important international framework with this global compact. This here is our space so that we, women, men, children, migrant population from all regions, so that we can all build something together. We have an agenda upon which we have been working for long, but we need to feel free to think outside the box. If we need to work on different issues, if we need to change anything that needs to be changed in order to listen to each other and come out of this meeting stronger with a stronger articulation so that everything that we do in our regions, in our countries and globally can have an impact on the population and on migrant population. Yesterday, we were at Brandenburg Gate, which was a symbolic event. Migration is not only about the person who migrates, it's about the conditions that make that this person has to migrate all the decisions that families or certain people need to make in order to live somewhere else. Migration is about families that stay, um, about the host societies, about governments. Migration is a part of our nature. What do we need to change? At the level of public policies, what do we need to change at the level of legal frameworks? And how can we articulate so that we can change things and um, there are no more uh, life, lives lost uh, in Africa and Latin America all over the world so that moving from one country to another is not a risk any longer or so, or so that people from Latin America or Asian or Africa is much more costly than for people from other regions. These are the kind of exclusions that we have to prevent. Or, for instance, uh, so that the risk is um, higher for women that need to migrate because there are conditions for exclusion. So let's make use of the strength that we have. Here we have people who change the life of other people and the life of communities every day. There is a lot of knowledge in this room that we need to make use of in order to change something and in order to establish uh, agreements or uh, in order to convey important messages in this forum. I am proud because this panel is composed mainly by women, and we have a, a, a culture which is a woman, because the strength of women needs to be shown in decision-making spaces, not only when we work with people, but also when we make decisions. So good decisions need to be made. So let's not be afraid to see what we need to say. Let's listen with all our heart and all our strength, and let's build something together. Thank you very much. Bueno, ahora, eh, now we are going to introduce the panelists. First, we will start with Beate Gdetsky. I hope I uh, pronounced the name well. She is the co-chair of the Commission for Refugees and Migration of the German Federal Foreign Affair Affairs Office. Thank you very much, and welcome. Thanks very much. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Federal Government of Germany, let me first of all thank everybody, in particular John Bingham, Lise Maas, Bernice uh, Valdez Rivera and the ICMC team for preparing the Civil Society Days as part of the Global Forum on Migration and Development here in our multicultural capital Berlin. 
The civil society days, including the common space, offer the opportunity for constructive dialogue between government representatives and the civil society on migration and rightfully play an important part in the GFMD. Ladies and gentlemen, the number of international migrant persons living or working in a country other than the one they were born in reached a record of 244 million. This represents roughly three times the entire population of Germany, more than seven times the population of our co-chair Morocco. These are impressive figures which make one thing very clear. Migration is a topic at the heart of the international agenda of today. And we should make use of this opportunity that <clears throat> is created by this fact. In my remarks, I will touch on two areas which deserve particular attention going forward. It's one, the developments and the contribution that GFMD and civil society actors can mobilize to the international debate. And second, the positive aspects of regular, orderly and safe migration, and especially labor migration, that are often overlooked in <clears throat> the present heated political debates. In recent years, there have been very remarkable developments in the international political agenda with regards to migration. Let me just recall the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development in 2015 that has been agreed by 193 UN member states. It calls for orderly, safe, regular and responsible migration and mobility of people. This agenda is, recognizes the positive contribution made by migrants to inclusive growth and sustainable development, but also pledges that no one should be left behind. Last year, there have been a number of high-level summits that have, that have shown that the topic has indeed become a global one, which needs to be dealt with on a broader and all-encompassing basis. Last September, the, Ref uh, the UN General Assembly adopted the New York Declaration for Refugees and Migrants, calling for a global compact on migration, GCM, as well as a global compact on refugees, GCR, in 2018 and to be adopted on the basis of the 2030 Agenda. This New York Declaration also explicitly mandated GFMD to provide substance to the negotiation process to the Global Compact on Migration. And this is a chance that should be seized by the GFMD and also here by the Civil Society Days. In this spirit, this year's GFMD Government Days and Civil Society Days focus on the GCM and are just right in time to feed in our contributions to the GCM negotiations. The overarching motto of this year of, uh, is towards a global social contract on migration and development and aims at highlighting that safe, regular, orderly migration is in the common interest of countries of origin and destination and of the migrant themselves. The GFMD stands out as a pool of knowledge on global migration and development practice and can contribute over a decade of experience and reflection on migration into the GCM's consultation. In this process, mutual interaction and trustful cooperation with the civil society is of exceptional importance to us and especially the foreign, foreign office and the federal government at large. It's our common interest that the GCM becomes a new and unique global framework for steering in a safe way large migration movements. We need a management of these movements at the global level in which often heterogeneous interests of countries of origin, transit and destination are balanced and the rights of migrants, including marginalized groups, are respected. The questions we are working on are complex and all stakeholders must be included to develop this framework and to reach good and functional solutions. The civil society, and that is you that are representing civil society today, is a vital interlocutor for any government that wishes to develop and implement a successful migration policy. But before we can act, we need to listen to all positions and the expertise around the table. That is why it is so important to have an open and honest debate with all stakeholders. Although 
views may differ on some subjects, and I think they surely will, it's important to take the time to come to a thorough understanding of each other's perspective. The Migration Compact should seek to achieve cooperation in the spirit of partnership among states for improved migration governance, taking successful examples into account and establish a reporting mechanism for progress achieved then. <clears throat> this, its implementation should also take place with the participation of the private sector and the civil society. Especially as a GFMD co-chair, Germany pushes for an ambitious GCM which links global standards for migration governance with recommendations for specific aims and a review mechanism. Worldwide, mixed flows of people are increasingly leaving their homes in search of safety and a better future. Root causes for migration are manifold and complex. Very often, political instability, human rights violations, poverty, and a lack of social and economic prospect and a growing impact of climate change are drivers for migration. Migrants, therefore, often embark on irregular, dangerous and potentially life-threatening journeys. And we see that nearly every day, unfortunately, in the central Mediterranean route where migrants uh, come from Libya, mostly, to Italy. Germany has been the destination of significant mixed migration flows for quite a time, with a high peak in 2015 where we received almost 900,000 persons applying for protection under the regime of the Geneva Convention. Besides, Germany also welcomes between 300,000 to almost 400,000 EU citizens annually in net terms, mainly in the context of labor mobility within the framework of the EU freedom of movement regime. Germany, as a country with a negative demographic trend, clearly needs migration. In a globalized world, labor markets are becoming increasingly interconnected. Migratory movements must follow agreed rules and procedures, not to keep migrants away, but to protect the migrants as they move abroad to seek employment or safety. An irregular migrant is in most cases an employ exploited migrant. Therefore, safe, regular and orderly migration is a common interest. There are countries, and Germany is one of them, which face severe shortage of skilled workers in a number of professions. Therefore, we will intensify our efforts to first facilitate the recognition of certificates earned abroad or of equivalent work experience. Secondly, we will move, open up certain skilled labor markets to non-EU citizens, special, by example, healthcare and nursing professionals, under full observation of international labor rights and national labor standards. And thirdly, we will ensure fair um, recruitment practices and try to promote them. At the same time, we need to consider the interests of the countries of origin. Brain drain instead of brain... No, brain gain instead of brain drain. So. <laughs> Germany aims to pursue cooperation with vocational training centers abroad with a view to improving employment prospects in the respective country or region and at the same time qualifying foreign diploma holders to take up a job in Germany. Circular migration can be a driver for development. Migrants who have acquired additional skills while living abroad can make important contributions to the development of their countries of origin or of third countries. If migration is managed in a smart and orderly manner, it can indeed foster this triple win we all want, which is to the benefits of the country of origin, destination and, importantly, to the migrant himself. If we talk about migration, it is also necessary to admit that countries have the right to decide who is allowed to enter their country and stay or not. All migrants in Germany are protected according to international standards, including the pr principle of non refoulement Migrants who n do not apply for asylum or whose application are considered inadmissible have to return. But let me also clearly state our focus lies on 
voluntary returns. People <coughs> excuse me, who go back to their countries, voluntary or involuntary, need perspectives and reintegration for a return in dignity. Therefore, well-managed return migration is also of high importance and the government has done also a lot to promote the reintegration and my colleague, Ms. Löbel from the Ministry of Development Cooperation um, can also um, re report a bit about that perhaps. Ladies and gentlemen, as a co-chair, Germany is delighted that the outcome of today's Civil Society Recommendation Day will serve as a direct input to the corresponding focus session of the common space tomorrow. Let us work together so that the global compact on migration becomes a new and unique global framework for better steering lar large migration movements, a framework for safe migration management at the global level in which heterogeneous interests of countries of origin, transit and destination are balanced, communalities enhanced, while taking the rights of migrants, including marginalized groups, into account. In this sense, I wish you all a success for today's discussions and a lot of Tatendrang and push the governments to move ahead. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador, for for those remarks, but also thanks to the German government for your cooperation the last year in working with civil society on common space. You said rightly that we might not agree on everything, but at least there is a very open dialogue on, on the issues that concern all of us, so we really appreciate that. So having that said, I'm pleased to now turn to our next uh, representative from the German government, who is uh, Dr. Elke Löbel. She's the Commissioner for uh, Refugees, but also Deputy Director uh, on Displacement and Migration, as well as Crisis prevention and management so that is a very big portfolio um, and she just told me that she's previously been with civil society for a long time and, and, and shares that experience too so the floor is yours thank you and I will take the opportunity before starting with my points I prepared um, to ju give just a short feedback to the uh, first part of our uh, reunion union today um, I thank you very much for this personal introduction, asking everybody what is your relation to migration. And I was very much thinking about my relation is that my father left the eastern part of Germany shortly before the wall was built. And 20 years of not meeting his mother and me not meeting my grandma is something which is within my family a very deep uh, experience. So I just wanted to thank you we really love to support this event uh, from the side of the BMZ and I feel that you have a lot of energy and spirit which is very personal and we can only change the world if we use this spirit and this energy and if we touch all decision makers also with their personal experience. So thank you very much for this introduction, I think it was wonderful. Um, now I would like um, to line out some, some points. Um, if we talk about migration, we know that people have always moved long distances in order to escape from war, oppression or simple poverty and to find a better life elsewhere. When they mi migrate, they share their knowledge with others, they are engaged in exchange and they bring ni new dynamics and development. This picture has a bright side and a dark side and it raises a lot of questions. But one thing is certain, a world without migration has become unthinkable. Migration does not only pose questions and challenges to policymakers, it also presents enormous challenges for host communities and civil society. On Monday we had a meeting with mayors from all over the world and they exchanged their experience on migration and development. The meeting was a success and I think uh, we should have more of exchange on these practical and implementation issues. That is where reality lies. We know that forced migration is affecting the global south much more than Europe. Without international solidarity, we will be unable to meet the challenges the migration and refugee issue means to all of us. And some people in Europe think 
the migration problem is in Europe? No. 80% of migrants and refugees are moving around in developing countries in the South. We all together have to look for feasible answers. And this is why we are here today. I would like to thank you, the chair, Mr. Bingham, we met, the organizers, FENRO, uh, for um, organizing and to give me the opportunity to speak to you at the opening of the GFMD Civil Society Days. Um, after all, the big challenge we face in the period up to 2018, Mrs. Chesky mentioned already very important points, is that we are part of the negotiation of the Global Compact for Migration. So we, we have a way to influence the policy and the policy makers. Uh, what I, I was very pleased when I listened to Mrs. Uh, Maas uh, Wies yesterday on the opening of the GFMD forum. She said, it's time for the era of implementation. And this is for development workers a real good statement because we totally agree and development cooperation has to play its role in this implementation. So let's act, that's my message to all of you, and let's see where we can join our efforts. What are, in our view of the Ministry for Development Cooperation, the challenges uh, that require a compact on migration? As I said, people will continue to leave their home countries because of growing inequality, inadequate livelihoods and a lack of opportunities. We have million, will have millions of African young people looking for work on the labor mar markets worldwide. Um, we have other factors are that people leave their homes uh, because of political instability and violent conflicts. The countries bordering on Syria have taken in millions of refugees and they are nearing the limits of their capacity to integrate newcomers and meet the needs of these refugees and migrants in their countries. We have the consequences of climate change, such as droughts and floods, East Africa, shortly we had big information about what is going on in East Africa. It is estimated that the number of people displaced and migrating because of climate change will reach 200 million people by the middle of this century. And sadly, migration is becoming a for-profit operation. You can earn a little more money in um, um, smuggling of uh, people than in drug business. Instability in transit countries is making human trafficking easier. So this is the big issue we have to work on, the whole um, smuggling of people. The Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development, this for made refugee policy and migra migration a focal, focus areas of its work at the beginning of the new term in 2013. We have responded with various uh, difficult, uh, different uh, practical solutions. We have launched three special initiatives with additional fundings, spe specifically directed to migration and refugee issues. We increased the funding for refugee and migration work to 3 billion euros in 2016, and we will increase that amount to 3.5 billion in 2017. With this effort, we have made a big a big uh, difference. Just to give you some examples, I have been working, the, before I, I became the Commissioner for Refugee uh, Policy, I was in charge of the Syrian crisis. What we did there is, for example, we made it possible that one million children, Syrian children outside of Syria, were able to go to school uh, in the neighboring countries and in Syria. We created 61,000 short-term jobs in the region through cash for work, employment in the Middle East, and we will have the same number or even more in 2017. And we could do this only because we had a multi-actors multi uh, approach and lots of NGOs, international and local NGOs, supported us and joined us in this program. So without so civil society, would, we would not, not have been successful in that. In the last three years, my ministry received 35% additional funds from our chancellor. We are very thankful for that. 
Um, the challenge of increasing refugee and migration movements ha has made development cooperation as a policy field a bigger focus of public interest in Germany. We have a lot of support because people feel these people who come to Germany left their country and this has something to do with the way we live here in Europe. We, so this happens also um, and we thank, thank, we're thankful for the work on public awareness rising which civil society in Germany is doing. So go on with that. People have to understand what are the reasons for migration and refugee um, problems. Um, but there's one thing I want, would like to state, although it's a little bit at the side of the mig migration issue alone, development cooperation alone cannot meet the enormous challenges. The causes for forced displacement and also migration have to be addressed at their roots. And that means that it's not only development policy, it's, it, we need a comprehensive approach also of foreign security and trade policy. If you think about jobs in Africa, if we still pay for coffee and other products of Africa, small amounts of money, there will not be created the jobs, uh, the, dignity, the dignity jobs and dignity work in Africa. So we have to think not only in development issues. Um, our strategic approach is based on the Agenda 230. I don't uh, want to mention again the orderly, safe, regular and responsive uh, migration issue we have in there. This is a real good um, result. We have to raise awareness that migration can have positive impact on, de de on development in many ways. Uh, uh, for example, it is the best poverty reduction strategy we, we have, or one of the best, and we have to make uh, policy uh, makers understand this. Um, I just would like to repeat some numbers my minister mentioned yesterday in the GFMD, because we want to build a bridge from the, the GFMD forum and also to uh, civil society, talking about remittances. He yesterday stated the following. We have 160 billion ODA worldwide. We have 1,700 billion expenses in military, uh, military expenses, and we have 4 145 billion remittances. So the ODA is the smallest amount in these different areas of financing. And we have to change that. Um, so the strategic goal of our development cooperation is to make the positive uh, effects of migration a reality and to support programs who support these positive uh, effects uh, in the future even more. What do we do? We support our partner countries with regard to defining and implementing migration policies, for example. Uh, we help host communities integrate migrants and refugees, and we support channels for legal labor migration, migration with our partner countries. For example, in Morocco, I'm going to the GFMD forum uh, to a panel with the Moroccan uh, government and there we uh, talk about our cooperation. Morocco has adopted new migration and asylum policies which now have to be implemented on the local level and our GIZ, our implement, um, implementation agency, is working very, very um, uh, strongly in Morocco for ages. We did not start now. We already started five years ago with this program. So the BMZ, for example, is helping local governments to integrate newcomers, be it migrants looking for jobs or refugees or returnees. And we help local authorities and the national uh, government to improve their cooperation. So we go into the structures because this is sustainable and it's not only short term support. But it would be wrong to believe that governments could manage the challenge of migration by themselves and on their own, simply by adopting laws and applying, admi uh, applying administrative procedures. Unless the people and their organizations, which are involved directly and indirectly, are supporting this, there will be no successful migration in the long term. So it we count on you and we count on the population in the countries where migration is a big issue, that they make their voice also heard. We need the NGOs also to act as critical observers. 
uh, in, the e in the GFMD and the Migration Compact, you have to make your words heard. And I think the, the meeting today and the conference is a good chance for you. It was mentioned by, by our friend from Mexico very clearly. So, once again, I want to emphasize uh, our and my personal interest in the contributions that you will bring into the GFMD Summit, to the negotiations on the Global Compact for Migration, and to all practical efforts to make better migration possible worldwide. In that spirit, uh, and in the spirit of the Brandenburg <laughs> yesterday, I wish of us all inspiring discussions here and in the Global Forum um, in the Foreign Ministry. And let's act, let's implement, go ahead, and thank you for all your energy and spirit. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. We are now going to give the floor to Bernhard Bonhurst. I hope I pronounced it well. Um, he is the chair of Benro, and we are grateful to Benro for all the support uh, we've been given. It's um, an umbrella for many uh, German organizations. Many of them uh, support Latin American organizations, and we are grateful for all the support. I wasn't told that I could also speak in Spanish uh, at the meeting. I would have preferred to, to speak in Spanish because I, I think that uh, my, my Spanish is better than my English. English, but, uh, well, next time. So, uh, good morning, everyone. Schönen guten Morgen. Bonjour. Muy buenos dias. Next time in Castellano. Uh, dear Civil Society Chair, Ms. Maas. Dear Co-Chair, Senora Valdez Riviera. Liebe Frau Czeski. Liebe Elke Löbel. Dear delegates, dear colleagues and friends, in the name of FENRO, as chairman of FENRO, the umbrella organization of the German Development and Humanitarian Aid NGOs, I warmly welcome you here in the lovely city of Berlin. It's really an honor for me to be here today with you in this opening session. And to say the truth, I'm deeply impressed to see you coming together, so many people from so many places in the world and all of you with the same aim to share, to improve the well-being of the migrants, families, and communities. As you probably know, and, and we heard it from Ms. Chesky, in the last years, the situation of migrants and refugees had a big influence on German policy and society. And in this context, I think the GFMD is taking place in Germany at the right moment, because it helps us to deepen the discussion, the discussion and cooperation in the civil society, but also civil society in Germany with the government. So this year, we have initiated a broad consultation process within the German civil society in the area of migration and development. Of course, first of all, we had to catch the attention of the people. Only a few already knew about GFMD, and uh, to admit, I also learned a lot of GFMD in the process in the last 12 months. And during the last months, I think we successfully brought together many organizations and associations from different backgrounds, from development, workers, and also uh, migrant, organiza migrant organizations, and this was very important to us. We came to agree upon common positions and demands towards the German government, which is currently co-chairing the GFMD. We discussed our positions with the German GFMD ambassador, Dr. schmidt Bremme, and other government representatives. And of course, they did not agree with all our positions, which is usual case in democracy. But they showed, as we heard it, they showed real interest in what we brought forward. I think in times of shrinking spaces for civil society actors, we really appreciate a government that supports the dialogue with civil society on a national as well as on an international level. And thus, thus our government, but we are all together also, we are sending an important political signal. All the common positions that, we've defined, that we have identified as German civil society can be traced back to our common conviction that we need a right-based and development-orientated migration policy. Such policy must focus on people, regardless on their resist resistance status and origin. 
We see the global compact as a big opportunity on the path to more binding policy approaches and concepts on a global level. Agreeing on a strongly binding character of the obligation is key to success. To this end, clear targets and indicators must be specified in the global compact. And of course, regular review of the implementation is very important for us. In our view, the compact must fulfill the following criteria. It has to be orientated toward the 2030 agenda. It must draw on the existing international legal frameworks such as, for example, the UN Migration, Migrant Workers Convention and corresponding ILU conventions, and it should fill existing gaps in those frameworks. By focusing on the compact here at the Civil Society Days, we confirm our claim to contribute to the shaping of a global migration governance. And we also call on the German government as a co-chair of the GFMD to push for an ambitious compact. If you would like to learn a little bit more about the process here in Germany in the last year and about the results of our process, you can pass by the Fenro information desk outside in the foyer. There you will find our position papers. And uh, coming to the end, finally, I would like to thank the Robert Bosch Foundation as they supported and accompanied our GFMD process. Thank you very much. And of course, I would like to thank all of you for your commitment and your hard work you have done up to now and you will do in the future. Working together, exchanging ideas and thoughts as civil society in the area of migration and development has brought us closer together. I'm sure that we can build on this in the future. Concerning the upcoming civil society days, I wish that we will experience a similar dynamic. Let's make the most of the coming days. Let's come up with the concrete proposals to help build up a global migration governance that improves the situation of so many migrants and their families worldwide. I wish all of us good success, all the best in the next days, and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Band and thank you very much, Venro and the whole team for bearing having oops, <laughs> having been with us in this organizing of, of the GVMD. I think it's been a mutual learning process. Um, I also just want to acknowledge Dr. Lebo um, because I know you have to leave soon to speak at another panel at the government forum. Um, so if she gets up and leaves, it's not because she's not interested in the civil society days, but she has another uh, obligation. So turning to uh, to our next speaker, who doesn't need any introduction, I, I, I think um, I'm sure you've all been receiving lots of emails from her and her team, Sophie van Hazen. Um, just before I give you the floor, Sophie, I want to call into memory that it was only seven months ago that we had another GFMD in Dhaka. It's been a crazy run for, for all of you involved in this organizing, the International Steering Committee and ICMC's team. Um, the program is fuller than ever. There are eight working sessions, six special sessions, 10 common space sessions. I don't know how many tea tables. It's really very, very ambitious. So I just want to, at this moment, thank the team for putting that together. But in the meantime, Sophie also got a baby. So she just is this one of those power women that does it all. Uh, so thank you, Sophie. And, and please, if you could take us to the program. Oh, wow, what an introduction. Thank you so much, Wies. Um, dear colleagues, dear friends, dear excellencies, thank you so much for joining us here in Berlin. Um, I think you can imagine how happy we are to finally see the faces behind, uh, behind all of the exchanges that we had with all of you the past couple of months. So it's really lovely for, for myself, but I'm pretty sure I talk for our entire team to see every one of you finally in the same room. So welcome to Berlin. Um, for those of you who were at the Brandenburg Gate yesterday, I just wanted to say that I thought it was one of the most beautiful ways to start this GFMD. Uh, I think it energized everyone uh, incredibly, including myself. Uh, so thank you for those who were so brave to share their testimonies, to share their stories and songs. Um, <laughs> so thanks again. 
Uh, and like we already said, uh, indeed, I think this is one of the fastest GFMDs um, ever. We only had indeed six months to organize since the last one in, in Bangladesh, in Dhaka. So it's been uh, challenging, but it's also been very exciting to, to work on this program and to work on this GFMD, uh, especially because I think this GFMD takes place at a key moment. Uh, at a key moment in time. And we've heard it before in, in the conversations of the other panelists. Um, but I think on the one hand, it, it seems that there is really an international commitment to, works, to work towards um, a, a global governance system that ensures safe, orderly, and regular migration. Um, but at the same time, the situation for migrants, um, for organizations, grassroots organizations that work on the ground with migrants, uh, for civil society in general, the situation uh, doesn't seem to get better, um, it seems to get worse. Um, so it brings us a little bit to, okay, we have the language, we have, we have the conventions, we have um, the Agenda 2030, um, we have the New York Declaration, so there is strong language on, on uh, migrant protection, but why don't we see this change on the ground? Um, so the question is, um, the question we want to see answered in this GFMD is, how can we use the prospect of this global compact to really make sure that there is measurable change for migrants and for, uh, for people working at the local and national level? Um, and at the same time, there is a particular challenge to it that the process is incredibly fast and it is full. So how will we, as civil society, achieve focus uh, and strategy into all of this? Um, so this is a little bit of the context of why we built the program as it is. And I wanted to um, just show you a slide. And you all have this in your welcome package. There's a one-pager with the guiding questions and with what do we mean with mechanisms. But actually, we focus so much on mechanisms because we want to challenge all of you in the conversations that you'll be having today and on the second day on Saturday. We want to challenge you to not only look at restating rights and restating commitments, but to really look at how can we make these commitments um, real, practical. How can we build examples around them so that we have concrete tools to work with and also to talk to governments with. Um, so before I actually walk you through the program and explain a little bit about the GFMD, I actually wanted to welcome um, the people that are attending parallel meetings today as we speak live from Kathmandu, Budapest and Dakar. Uh, they are actually following our plenary conversations right now from those locations uh, through our live streaming channel. And it is really thanks to uh, Terre des um, that these outreach meetings are taking place as we speak. Uh, we have the great Vincent Tournepierre who will take us uh, through some of the main um, discussion items from those outreach meetings on the second day in the afternoon in the reporting back plenary. But he will also feed back a few questions from those outreach meetings uh, to the panelists and to the, the discussions uh, on stage. So thank you um, for helping us with that. I think it could, could be a great precedent to increase uh, participation of civil society worldwide to the GFMD um, because it is a lot, of, a lot of effort to actually come here. Um, so we really hope to see this in the future as well. Um, so I also saw that there's quite a lot of new people in the room, which is really amazing. Thank you for joining us uh, to the GFMD. Like we've already said, it's the tenth. It's the tenth edition. Um, <laughs> Hi, Laura. <laughs> uh, it is the tenth edition. Um, so the GFM, the Global Forum on Migration and Development, is an informal. It's a non-binding uh, process, a government process, where governments come together to share. Um, experiences from the national and from the regional level and hopefully to generate commitment on some of them. Uh, civil society self-organizes two days linked to the government summit. Um, and, we, and ICMC, so the International Catholic Migration Commission, acts as the GFMD coordinating office, but we don't do this alone and we already mentioned it. We do this uh, in very close cooperation with a an amazing group of civil society organi organizers from around the world, the International Steering Committee. So together we set the program, we set the focus of each DFMD. So thank you, uh, all of you are in the room. Thank you, uh, International Steering Committee. <laughs> 
Um, I won't go, I wanted to give you a bit of an idea of the numbers that we have, but I think most of it has been, has been uh, touched upon already, and we've actually seen it with our own eyes, how diverse the group is, but I did want to um, want to re-emphasize that we have an, a record number of people who registered, and indeed this is the first day, we are expecting more people on the second day, but um, yeah, even though it was only six months after the previous GFMDs, we have a, we have a, full, a full house. Uh, and you are from over 60 countries worldwide, so this is pretty impressive. Um, so it takes me back to the structure of this GFMD. You've been seeing that everywhere, I'm sorry to stalk you with it, um, but it is, I think, important because it is different than what we have done in previous years. So usually the civil society days take place two days, uh, then you have common space where civil society meets with governments and then you have the government days. This year this structure was shifted a little bit. Um, so the government days are actually taking place right now, so they're going into their second day of government um, discussions. And then together, tomorrow, we come together in common space. Um, and then the second day, on Saturday, we will continue our conversation. Um, so this has shifted our strategy a little bit um, in, in the program setup, in the guiding questions. Uh, it means that we will really use this first day to look at, okay, so there is this global compact, but what are we, what do we as civil society consider to be our non-negotiables and our red lines into this global compact? And in addition to that, can we give examples of mechanisms that, actu that we actually believe in are um, real implementers of safe, orderly and regular migration? So this is the objective of this day. Um, the second day we will be really looking at, okay, so this is what we've discussed with governments, this is what we've heard so far, Will we do anything with it or will we set our own agenda? What will we as civil society be doing the coming six months, the coming month, the coming years? So that's a little bit the focus of these two, of these two different days. Um, maybe touching upon the themes that are in the different working sessions and special sessions. So you see on the program, so we have a plenary <coughs> We're in it today. We have this afternoon working sessions and special sessions. And there's actually no real um, content difference between the working sessions and the special sessions. It's just the special sessions are a bit shorter. So it means we have, <laughs> I say this because I, I hear that there's a bit of confusion about that. So uh, the focus is the same. We want to get the same um, answers to our questions in the working sessions and special sessions, but the time is a bit shorter, so we have less discussion starters, for example. But to come back to the themes, um, of course all of the teams refer back to our 5 year 8 point plan of action. Um, they're all in your welcome packages if you feel like having another look. Um, what is interesting about this plan is that actually next year we will going into its last year of its implementation, so it will be interesting at some point to look at, okay, what will we do after, uh, after, the, five, after the five years? Um, and I also wanted to briefly touch upon um, the movement report, because for those of you who are interested in looking at what progress have we, have we as civil society actually made on each one of those points, um, well, Elaine McGregor from Maastricht University actually took on the challenge to try to find out, and we have a second edition of the movement report with scorecards that try to measure progress of civil society on these teams at national level. So we're currently looking at piloting them. But there's, there's, they're not in your folders, but you can find them on the, on the table with conference material. So then how do we bring it all together? How do we make sure that day one common space and day two are tied together? We have an incredible team of rapporteurs this year. Um, so every working session, every special session has a rapporteur who will be taking notes within a template and you also have that template in your folders. Um, and this report will have meant multiple purposes. First of all, it will, f it will serve the chair and co-chair in highlighting some of the priorities to governments in their opening, opening speech. Uh, but it also, and this is interesting this year, there is every working session and special session has identified a discussion starter to also uh, talk in the corresponding common space session. And the task of this rapporteur or discussion starter will actually be to, uh, to link back to the civil society discussions on the same topic, but then in the panel with governments. So the reporting templates will also um, be of use, of use to, uh, to those that are taking up that role. 
Um, I already mentioned we have Vincent Tournecuyer who will be reporting back on the outreach meetings on the second day. Um, we have Rex Verona, and I cannot see him in the room, but hi Rex, <laughs> who, will, who has taken on the, the, the challenging uh, but exciting task of reporting back on the second day, uh, Commitments Day, to look at civil society moving, civil society action in the coming months, in the coming years. But at the same time, he'll, he will also try to link back to our conversations today on recommendations to governments and on common space. Um, and then, last but not least, on the rapporteurs, we have uh, Carolina Gotardo, who will be um, who will be the women rapporteur. There you are, <laughs> Carolina, who actually has a team uh, working with her to be present in each of the working and special sessions to really track how the different thematic discussions relate back to specificities of women uh, in migration. And then we have Milena Franca. I don't know if Milena is in the room. Yeah, Milena, <laughs> who is our child rapporteur uh, and who also has a team behind her who will do uh, the same, but then for uh, children in migration. So thank you so much for taking up this, this uh, also important task. A few practicalities, <laughs> and my colleague Laura will actually take you through through a bit of the structure of the venue and lunches and and um, really practical things. But I already wanted to highlight a few of them to you uh, before we go into the next uh, agenda item. So first of all, access to common space. Um, as you've seen, you all have a one pager um, so in your folders that explains a little bit the reasoning why we had to limit um, participation of civil society to 200 people. And it is actually because uh, the German chair and the venue of the German chair uh, has a space capacity limitation. Um, we realize this is very, very unfortunate and it's a little bit a missed opportunity. Um, and we would have liked to see it differently. Um, this also has an implication for um, the access to the reception tonight. You have all received an email on this as well, whether you will, you will have access or not. Um, then interpretation, as you know, there, there's interpretation to uh, French, Spanish and English, and there is live streaming. Um, so there's, we are currently live, but there will also be a file uh, online accessible afterwards. Then, of course, feel free to join us in the online world um, by tweeting <laughs> and posting on social media. You have all of the hashtags um, on your folders, but you can also see it on that, on that slide. So please join us in, in spreading the word. And then I already said it, we have a conference material desk, uh, which actually has quite a few of the documents that were refer referred to by the panelists, such as the Act Now document and the New Deal uh, document, but also Agenda 2030, uh, the Peter Sutherland report, and the report on human mobility goals by Monsieur Crepeau. And I think this is it. Um, you all know where to find us, so if you have questions, um, all of the team and the volunteers are um, wearing t-shirts uh, with f questions <laughs> on the back of them, so you, you will be able to track us down. So thank you very much, and thank you very much, Chair and Co-Chair, for, uh, for assisting us. <laughs> <laughs>